God gave me a talent, so I cannot get over it. I'm steady yeah, at I'm probably too much. What's up guys, it's Ariel Faith again, back with another video, and your girl is here to discuss what you guys voted for. So I put a poll on Instagram saying if you guys want to see my insecurity videos or red flags and turnoffs, and honestly, so I didn't realize how many red flags I had really put in down or that I was going to think of, and there was a lot. <laughs> um, your girl's been single for over three years now and I have definitely had my study on men I feel like since I was basically 13. <laughs> I definitely have picked up on some things that are just patterns in the male species that I can't help but not ignore. So this video is just gonna be all red flags. I'm definitely gonna have that turn off video and the insecurity video coming soon. Um, shout out to all of you guys that watched my last video on domestic violence and responded to that. I really appreciated that because that was a video that I have put off for the longest time, just like stuck in the back of my brain. So the fact that I have you guys' support on that really meant a lot to me. And I do have all of the red flags in my phone because I didn't want to miss anything. I just wrote them all down in my notes, so we're basically going to go off that. We're going to go ahead and get into this video, so go ahead and like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell button to be notified every time your girl posts a new video. So we're going to go ahead and get right into this video in three, two, first red flag. I, by the way, I have... 12 I believe we're gonna go through 12 red flags and if you guys want to see any more videos like this make sure you give this video a big thumbs up so I can make sure to bring more of that for you guys okay the first red flag is very applicable I should say to once a guy or whoever girl doesn't matter comes up to you actually I don't know if this applies to girls yeah I get I don't know you, you, the boys can tell me, I guess, because I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But personally for me, I know I get really turned off, so this is kind of like a turn off, but I notice a red flag when a guy approaches me and he's just a little too cocky, confident, whatever you want to put it as. Because, yeah, they could be super cute, but if they're that confident to where they can be like, hey, mommy, like, let me get your number or some shit like that. Or I've seen and experienced a lot of out-of-pocket ass approaches from, if you want to call them men, you can, but to me, they're fuckboys. <laughs> the cuter ones, I, I hate to say this, but the ones that I always am down to, like, I'm like, ooh, okay, like, let me, he's cute, maybe he's a blessing from God, but usually, it, the, yeah, he is a lesson, he is a lesson, so that is a blessing, but for an example, the cutest guy recently, not recently, but he approached me when I really wasn't trying to talk to him, he was definitely one of the best looking men I've that has approached me before, I should say. And so I was really shook by that, but at the same time, there's this little voice in my head, you can say, that was telling me it was a little too good to be true. I was trying to get away from him, and I was like, oh, I was like, whatever, I was like, I gotta go, I'm doing something. Because he like caught me randomly on the street and I had somewhere to go. But um, he was cute. And I personally came off like an asshole the way I like try to shoo him off and he kind of made me feel bad by he was like, why are you acting like that? And I felt bad immediately, but here's the catch. The boy got an ex, got a crazy ex. He wasn't really trying to, he was just trying to be distracted if that made sense. <laughs> He was just trying to get over his heartbreak, and I found out later on that me and his ex had very similar features, and let's just say that boy trying to get back with his ex still, so. 
<laughs> and when he asked me to go on a date, like, I knew, I still knew it was too good to be true, and I straight up told him, yo, I'm, like, asking myself to get heartbroken if I go on a date with you, and I still did, I still went, and he, he's a good guy, but there was just bad intention there, is what I should say. But he was very confident, and he was a Scorpio, so that's why, I think. <laughs> oh, and I've also had this, ugh, this ratchet-ass, ugh, fuck boy from a San Jose party or something. I was probably, like, 19 at the time, so this was, like, a few years back, and the boy had the audacity to grab my ass like it was a hello. Like, do you know how bad that shit pissed me off? But I still was too drunk to say something. <laughs> I know I'm ashamed, don't do that. If that's that's already automatic disrespect and already like fuckboyish. I was so mad that I didn't like swing on him when I hella should have. I was 19, like I didn't know what I was doing. Like I don't yeah. Might have been 18, I don't know. But yeah, I was very young. So I'm still young, but you feel me. You get me? Okay. <laughs> I think it's cute though when a guy approaches you and you could tell he's a little nervous, I think that that's the cutest shit ever. Like, that's hella sweet. I've also met a Scorpio that was like that. So that, I'm not saying all Scorpios are like cocky, but because there was another Scorpio that recently approached me and he was, I don't know if it's because he was a little buzzed or what, but he was really innocent about his approach, I should say. He just, he's like, oh, let me take you out. Like, but I could tell that he was like a little nervous and was trying not to maybe like slur his words or like stumble on his words or something. And I personally thought it was super cute and super sweet. So don't believe that bullshit that nice guys finish last because honestly, you wanna finish last in my opinion. That means you, you don't got an end point, like really. <laughs> But yeah, if you're nice and sweet, it's always going to beat the guy that is sexual as hell and sexualizes you right off the bat because that first Scorpio I was talking about that like was like, hey mommy, like just I was trying to shoe off. He was definitely my type, I, but that... You can tell the respect wasn't there, so immediately I was turned off by it. Oh, here's another example I wanted to put into that point. If you're texting him and you ask him, why do you like me? And he just replies, I don't know, you're just different. That boy did not put any type of thought into what he wanted to respond. He wasn't trying to impress you. He wasn't, he just didn't put any thought into it because he was lazy and doesn't really care, in my opinion. He just probably looking for a booty call, but that's just my opinion. By the way, I do want to give a short disclaimer that this is all based off of my experience, my opinion, so if you get a little butt hurt by my beliefs, I'm sorry, you can click out of this video, but this is just personally what I've experienced and I've learned from past experiences <laughs> with other relationships and yeah so all right red flag number two. Oh, i kind of already mentioned this before like i said with that first scorpio if there's any exes in the picture <laughs> no bueno no bueno that's this out i will give you guys a little tea right now that first scorpio i was talking about that had the ex and came out very cocky i even tried my best to just let him have what he wanted, if you know what I mean, because I knew I wasn't really looking for something serious. I was just kind of hoping like it would turn into something, like that little hope, but at the same time, I didn't really care because I could tell he was... Once you find out that X is still trying to be in the picture and he low-key lied to me about that he was still trying to get with her and he still like missed that bitch and shit, she was blowing up his phone at 4 a.m. at my house, and I was like, I, ooh, I, was like, I don't like that. Mm -mm. That's the turn off. Like, I can't even get some dick. I still got this bitch and, like, uh, disturbing my peace and my sleep. Like, 
No, that's no, 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 no. I can't even. No, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. Mm -mm. So if you do have a guy that says that you feel like an, an ex is in the picture, just flat out ask him if you feel like he is trying to be serious or you are into him just flat out ask him when was your last relationship and if he's scared to answer that obviously don't ask too soon like don't ask that the first conversation you guys have but after i'd say once you feel like you're getting to know each other once you feel like the time is right and you feel like it's appropriate Definitely ask him when the, his last relationship was because some guys, most guys I feel like, don't go through that whole healing process after a breakup. They kind of just jump in and hoe out and do whatever they boys do, you know, to get over that heartbreak and usually it's the more toxic way. And I feel like that first guy I was talking about, I feel like he was kind of doing the same thing. I met him kind of at a club but also outside of the club so that should have been a red flag right then and there like why are you here like i should have known right then and there he was there to get over his ex-girlfriend <laughs> so i feel like personally for me i feel like if they've been if he's been single and just doing him you know for like five six months i feel like that's there's a little fuzz right there. <laughs> I feel like that's a good enough time to be like, okay, he's not just hoeing, he's not just heartbroken, he's not just using me to get over his little thing thing that he had, you know? So definitely try to do that. And if he feels like taken back or like offended or like tries to dodge that question, cut it. So that's already a red flag right there. If he's already he's already trying to hide something from you mm -mm. girl you deserve better or boy I don't know but you deserve better than that you feel me so some people would say personally my ex he was out of relationship for four months and that's when I realized I was like that's not really long for me personally I feel like I take a really long time to heal from people that I catch feelings for so I try my best not to catch feelings <laughs> just because I know if I do I'll just be heartbroken for a minute <laughs> but so that's why I say like five and a half six months like I'm like okay I might be able to let you in you feel me <laughs> red flag number three okay this is a kind of a big one just because it really has to do with respect for me and you'll definitely be able to tell if this boy is two-faced or not if you discover this if he I don't think I personally have ever experienced this but I've heard a lot of girls have so I had to throw it in there nothing that stands out to me actually no it's a lie after me and my ex broke up and we were still living together he was low-key disrespecting me like in in my own house with this boy so I guess but <sighs> Guys definitely act different when they're around their homeboys, but there's a different... Some, some of it's okay. Like, some of it's they're just being guys. But then there's also a time where he brings you around, like, maybe the first or second time. He brings you around his homeboys, and if he treats you like a friend or treats you like a homegirl, it's just a different type of respect. If, if you feel any type of weird vibe or disrespect while he's around his homeboys or other people get out of there get out just no <laughs> you deserve way way better than that because that's already red flag that they're being two-faced they're being shady and they're obviously telling their homeboys or whoever different things than they're telling you as in they're probably telling you oh you're beautiful like i want to be like they're telling you a whole bunch of cute shit but then to their boys, like, I don't give a fuck about that hoe or da da da. And like, oh, she just a booty call. Like, she, we just Netflix and chill. Like, he's downplaying it. Most likely, he's downplaying your connection, your relationship, whatever it is. He's downplaying that in front of his boys, whether I don't know what it's for, if it's embarrassment. Maybe his homeboys will bag on him for being in love or something. But a true 
real man won't give a fuck <laughs> about who knows that they're in love with this girl because when i believe that when you're in love you just don't give a fuck about what anyone has to say because it's really hard to find someone that you're really vibing with and really into so once you do find that why would you want to ruin it over dumbass opinions but that's just me that's just my opinion so <laughs> red flag number four Okay, so I kind of said this already earlier, but if he sexualizes you, right off the bat. I know a lot of girls are probably going to hate me for this because, trust me, trust me girl, I've been there too, honestly. I've hit it and quit it. I've hit it and on the first date, so I am not judging you whatsoever. Please don't think that because then I'd honestly be judging myself. <laughs> Why does the light look like that now? Now we're not in daylight anymore because the sun's going down, so it looks all weird. Okay, that's as best I think it's gonna get. Oh yeah, so if he sexualizes you right off the bat, for example, the first dude I was talking about, he definitely did that to me. I don't know where it came from because we weren't even, like, it's one thing if you initiate the conversation and start, like, sexualizing shit. No, actually, not even that. Guys, if a girl, like... I don't know. It's hard to say. Because personally, I can be, like, sometimes sexually flirty. Like, it does- it literally comes out as a joke, though. I'm rarely, like, serious about it if I just met you. <laughs> I probably- yeah, I'm never serious about it if I just met you. But sometimes it just happens like that, you feel me? It just- it just happens. But definitely, if he sexualizes you right off bat and, like, you don't put that wall there and, like, that demand of respect, and if- you do and he still like kind of ignores it <sighs> a lot of people are gonna hate me for this but I personally don't think that it'll last maybe that's just from my experience and if it does last I feel like it's just gonna be based on sex and you really don't want that at least personally for me it's gonna be based on lust and sex and Personally, I want to be like spiritually and like intellectually stimulated as well if I'm going to be with this person for a while, you feel me? Personally, I feel like the trend needs to come back of just being sweet and being nice and being genuine. 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 If you're from the Bay Area, you know that most guys do not take you on dates unless you have to literally like draw it out and spell it out for them and it's so sad like why can't i don't know what girls are telling these guys take them to a fucking five star ass restaurant and shit that is not me that's never been me honestly i've been offered like a cheesecake dinner before and that even made me uncomfortable and <laughs> i'm not materialistic some people are and that's totally okay maybe i need to raise my standards on that but Personally with me, like, if we go to a park with some tacos from Taco Bell, I am not complaining. Like, that would literally just make my whole day if a guy did that. I would not give a fuck about the price or where we're going. Like, you can... Don't take him on a hike, because that can be a little dangerous on the first date, at least. But you can take them to a park. You can take them on a little walk like around the neighborhood like to me like that is a cute ass day you can take him to the beach all these things are free as fuck so please do not use the excuse that we're expensive because you shouldn't be going on a date with a girl that has highest standards like that anyways because she's materialistic as fuck and boy you deserve better than that anyways if you go in a truck you can literally like make it all cozy and shit with some blankets and stuff and just have a picnic in there let's bring picnics back that's what i want to say let's bring fucking picnics back like were they ever thing because no guy has ever fucking taken me on a fucking picnic okay that's a lie maybe the beach but like a picnic anywhere that could be anywhere like if we go to mcdonald's to me that's a date i maybe i got low ass standards but why can't that be a cute ass date do not ask me hey you want to smoke just because you don't want to smoke by yourself like what the hell that's some that's some broke boy shit first of all like tell me your goals and shit you cannot 
tell me you have some goals if literally all you want to ever do is just kick it and smoke and drink in your fucking car or where the fuck you are like at your mama's house like that's that's not cute to me like you are not gonna win me over by doing that ratchet hood rat shit you feel me like she's not gonna do it that's hood rat shit i don't want to do hood rat shit why would you want to do hood rat shit with some girl you potentially want to be with for a while? You feel me? Like, please pick your company wisely. That's all I gotta say. Okay. So, how did I get into that? I was talking about sexualizing. What the fuck? <laughs> but yeah, if he sexualizes you right off the bat, grabs your thigh in the middle of a car ride on your first date and shit. Actually, no. Grabbing thighs are cute, but don't do it in this sexual... This fucking video is pissing me off now. Okay, guys. I've had so many complications with this fucking video. I'm getting so frustrated. <laughs> but yeah, so if he sexualizes you right off the bat, I just personally think that it's gonna end up really toxic. Maybe it's just because I'm an emotional ass Pisces and we can be taken for granted really fucking easily, especially with our sexual drive. So maybe that's just me. You guys can comment your opinions down below, but yeah, try to hold off as long as possible. Everyone says that, you know, you feel me? Just works out better that way. You gotta make that boy wait and make him work for you. This is red flag number five. Why do I look so ghostly? Yeah. Red flag number five. So say you somewhat friend zone him. I've definitely had my share of like guys I've tried to honestly like and personally I feel so bad because like I know in the acts that I'm leading them on when I don't mean to. Comment down below if you have any resolution for this because I do not know how to personally reject people if I know they're being so sweet, so nice, so genuine, and they just generally want to take me out. I'll definitely give them a chance and see like, oh, maybe I can be into you. But even if you're like not physically attracted to them, like, like, what do you do? <laughs> like, you don't want to come off like an asshole and be like, oh, you're not cute to me. Like, you can't say that. I personally still like struggle with this so I don't know how to reject someone nicely. Please comment down below what you say to reject someone nicely without lying to them. I'm not saying like I'll oh, be like I'm lesbian or be like oh I have a boyfriend because I don't want to lie to them. I'm a horrible liar first off because I cannot do that. You will see it all over my face. And, but I also don't want to reject someone that could be honestly so sweet or so nice and like you get free food out of it if they want to take you out, you feel me? This is where I'm going with this. If you friend zone them, or in any type of way, and be like, oh, we can be friends though. Or even if you've been talking for them for a while, and be like, actually, I think it's better if we just stay friends. And they react some type of way, and I mean like not in the better type of way. If they get butt hurt by that, or get spiteful, because that has definitely happened to me before, where I put someone in the friend zone, and I we vibes, like, he made me laugh, he was really cool, like, he was, I generally wanted to be his friend, but the second I, and we didn't even, we didn't even fuck, we didn't even have sex or anything, like, we did one time, and I didn't like it whatsoever, it was not enjoyable for me, so that was already, like, that red flag, it was like, Okay, I can't even do this without, like, no, I'm just not physically attracted to you. And I tried telling him that multiple times in the nicest way that I could. And he either, one, didn't get it. Like, he just refused to accept that. And then the second I tell him, I just want to be friends, this boy got really spiteful. I tried FaceTiming him like the next day or two and he was already fucking a new bitch. <laughs> so I don't know if he was just lonely and bored and I was just there or he really was trying to hurt my feelings. Either way, it's just not cool. Like he had his bitch answer and like text me and shit, but it's okay because I got him back. I don't remember what I said. Oh, I said something because his, his head game was really weak to me. Like, it was, no, mm-mm, no. 
it wasn't good like i said whatsoever and i texted him that with his new bitch and she saw the text message and i know that because this dude told me like months later he's like you made me mad because she read that and it just made things awkward after that i was like fucking good that's what you get for being spiteful and trying to be revengeful towards someone that was just trying to be nice about that and i was just trying to do me and it's not my fault i'm not attracted to you like god didn't want us together i didn't write it in the books he did but if he acts all immature or really butt her and like lashes out at you for wanting to be friends homegirl that is not the guy for you whatsoever i'm gonna say homegirl a lot just because i feel like i'm talking to some homegirls i feel like this girl chat sometimes it's just how i talk don't get offended guys because this is gonna be vice versa too just uh, relate where you can you feel me in my opinion even if it was a guy that i truly did want to be with and i said that to him how do i say this it should be a good thing if I was a guy and a, guy, a girl told me that, and I I still have this girl mentality, I guess. You guys should look that look at that as a good thing, because that means that girl wants to keep you in her life. She wants to stay friends, and everyone knows that if you can be friends with someone for a long period of time, that just makes the relationship after that much better. And it's not like she's kicking you out of, out of her circle. You should be happy that she's not cutting you off completely because she can definitely do that as well. Like, if she's trying to be homies, like, take that as a blessing. Don't take that as a punishment because in most cases, it's really not a punishment, at least not for me. And what if, like, she says that? What if she's still into you and she tells you that she wants to be friends? What if that just means that she wants to take things slow? Slow and steady wins the race. Haven't you guys heard? Like... Don't cry about it. Don't throw a tantrum. Don't be spiteful over that because you're honestly just making yourself lose at that point because you're not losing if she wants to be your friend. You're losing if you don't want to be her friend. And that's making the relationship have guidelines and restrictions to that. And there shouldn't be restrictions to that if you guys aren't even together, first of all. <laughs> Just be homies and see where that leads. Because in most cases, I know in the movies, in most cases, it comes back around in a positive way in the long run. So always remember that the next time you get friend zoned. It's not, it's not a bad thing, guys. It's really not. I mean, it could be. Don't get me wrong, it could be. Like, she can definitely cut you out and never speak to you again after that. But in most cases, it doesn't work like that. Maybe she just wants to do her. Maybe she wants to keep her options open. Maybe, like, she's not kicking you out of any type of place that wasn't even there. You feel me? And you have to remember that couples take breaks all the time. And I feel like it, a lot of the time it's for rediscovering yourself and just trying to see what you want and trying to heal on your own. Yeah, remember, this is your journey. Like, it's not, it's definitely your guys' journey as well, but you have to remember you have your own healing, your own journey to do as well, even after I feel like you're married. Like, after you're with someone for years or whatever, you still got your own shit to take care of. So don't think, you guys, don't think of you guys as a unit. I know a lot of people say that for, like, marriage and stuff, but you are your own person. So always remember that regardless. You guys are a team, yes, but within that team, you have your own individual values and roles to play for, and responsibilities for yourself and for your own self-healing and for other things like family, your career, stuff like that. Yeah, this is red flag number six. I said I mentioned this earlier, but if he just wants to chill with you and smoke with you First of all, he's probably broke <laughs> That's what I want to say if he only offers these three things to smoke drink or Netflix homegirl you just a booty call. He don't want more. He's probably keeping his options open. He's probably just trying to see what he likes. He's hoeing it out. He's being, what do they call it, promiscuous or whatever. That's a big word. I've never said that out loud before. <laughs> but yeah, just, just know that you could become a bay out of that, but I feel like in the long run, it's gonna get toxic real quick if that's all 
you're making him do for you because anyone can do that i can do that by myself right now i can go get a blunt i can go get a bottle and i can like people do that can do that by themselves that's not showing that he wants quality time with you if that makes sense like quality time to me is trying new things getting to know different people like it doesn't have to be your family but it could be go if you're gonna drink like go out and socialize meet new people like People forget that group dates are still a thing. You could still definitely do that. And honestly, in my opinion, I feel like they're way funner. I know a lot of people are going to say, that's not a word, but it's more fun, whatever. You can play a board game. You can play card games. Like, you can do so many things. You can watch a movie, but you don't got to do the thing thing. Like, if it's a lot of guys only turn on Netflix just to do that. When honestly, you can have popcorn. You can play a card game while you watch Netflix. You can, there's so many things you do. You can paint together. You can, there's, the list goes on. Just know that if he's limiting your guys' activities, it's because he's not, you're not on his priority list. And if you are, it's just his bored priority list. That, that boy is just bored and lonely and probably just wants to feel like he has a bay and wants to play house. Like, you deserve better, boo-boo. You deserve better. <laughs> All right, number seven. This is a big one. I haven't, this hasn't happened to me for a long time, but I remember when I was a teenager, I met a lot of guys like this, and I'm sure they're still out there. If you guys are hanging out, and he does this every time he's texting someone or looking at his phone. Come on, girl. Don't don't be that dumb bitch. <laughs> Please don't be that dumb bitch. Personally, I've caught guys doing stuff they shouldn't have on their phone by accident. So even even if he is doing that and you don't have the solid proof like in front of your eyes, like you do have the solid proof in front of your eyes because if he's being sneaky like that, if he's if he looks like he's hiding something, bitch, duh. Like, of course he's hiding something. And even if it's not that obvious, know that the universe is definitely going to show you when you're not even trying because that's happened to me a too many times that I, I, just, I wish it didn't, but I'm, I'm glad it did. Yeah, the universe is going to show you the truth one way or another. The truth always comes out. So don't go crazy. Don't, like, feel like you have to go through his phone. You have to, like, be like, oh, bitch, let me try to get his iPhone or whatever. Like, get his password. You don't got to try that hard because even just being females, we have a natural intuition that guys don't have. You can look it up. They're more practical. We're more emotional. We're more intuitive. They're more active i should say so if if you already have the red flags in front of your face just please don't ignore them because any person not even just guys like any person that is doing this like if you're sitting right here and they're going like this bitch stop looking stupid i personally would just get up and leave and then he'd be like where are you going and be like i'm just gonna go because you're busy texting some other bitch like it's it's clear as day. Don't ignore the signs. Like, straight up. If he also puts his phone, like, face down, like, that's already, that's already a sign. Like, that's, bitch, what are you hiding under there? Are you for me? Like, no. No, no, no. No, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, he's got hella, hella hoes that he's got to answer to, so just know that he ain't trying to wife you because he you're probably like number 47 on his hoe list like not to hurt your feelings but some sometimes the truth hurts like you just gotta find better and you know you will once you respect yourself and know what you deserve you, god will show you better trust him he'll always show you better and remember god does not take away anything without replacing it with something better Always remember that. Ew. Look at my err. Look at my err. <laughs> Red flag number eight is... <sighs> this is a tough one for me to swallow still to this day. If he dodges any questions you ask. Like, obviously don't put him under any interrogation, especially if you just met the dude. Like, don't do that. No, no, no. Like, give that boy some space. But there's certain things 
I personally have talked to someone and they've definitely dodged a lot of questions. Like, they just chose not to reply. And it's definitely a tough one to swallow because you feel like the communication is only one-sided. And personally, I just think that shows that you just don't care. That's giving the other person time and energy it's just making them come up with their own analyzation that probably doesn't exist. <laughs> it's helping them come up with their own answer. It's basically letting them answer for you. In their head, of course, because people obviously overthink. I'm definitely an overthinker. For an example, so one time I went to this guy's house and he didn't answer because he was on the phone with his mom. I texted him that I was there and I kind of saw him on his phone, but I was hiding in my car. I could tell he was on the phone, but because he wasn't answering, I was thinking that he just forgot that I was, or he didn't forget that I was coming, but he was just trying to dodge the fact that I was coming over. Like he was trying to cancel plans without canceling plan plans, if that makes sense. And I literally drove around the corner after he like uh, texted me and I told him, I was like, no, I was like, I'm not coming. Cause I, the second I saw him on his phone outside, I guess he was on the phone with his mom, but he couldn't get my text message or he couldn't reply or whatever because because he was on the phone, if that makes sense. If you have Sprint, you realize it because the internet just automatically shuts off whenever you're on the phone. And <laughs> I felt so dumb, but I definitely over was overthinking. I thought he was on the phone with his ex. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought he didn't get my text message or whatever. He was just waiting for someone outside or I don't know. But I drove around the corner while he was like kind of blowing up my phone. Like, are you serious? Like, you're not coming over? Da, 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 da. Like, he didn't realize why I was mad. But I came back over to his house after like 15 minutes of me trying to hold my shit together. And this was probably only the second time we ever hung out, but I swear... I've never held back tears from someone that I literally just met like I did with this. I was so upset. <laughs> and when I found out he was on the phone with his mom, I felt so fucking stupid. But like, little shit like that, if you do not give that person a straight answer when they ask for it, obviously they're asking for a reason. So please try to respect that and always ask the questions that you have respectfully. Like, don't interrogate or assume anything but if they don't answer you that's when you do kind of have the right it's not the right but it's just a natural it's natural human nature to come up with an answer sorry guys my camera cut out again because your girl ran out of storage so we're gonna try to get the rest of these done as quick as possible and i do have to um whisper more because it is 11 o'clock at night so I believe we were on number eight. Oh yeah, um, dodging questions. Don't let her come up with her own conclusions if you don't want her to, unless you want her overthinking, then yeah, do that. Keep ignoring her and pretty soon she'll come up with reasons why she hates you. This should be a given for anyone you hang out with, but if he treats customer service people or like anyone honestly anyone else around you differently than he treats you odds are sooner or later he's gonna treat you like that boo boo so make sure he has some patience and manners of course because that shows a true character and someone can only put on a facade for so long red flag number 10 is oh i think i already said this Okay, so I guess I have 11, because I'm pretty sure I already said this. If he is manipulative. So if he goes crazy about something that you do, that he's already done, that's already being really, really manipulative, because it's being hypocritical, obviously. And if he's also, like, controlling of what you say, or what you do, or what you wear, who you hang out with, stuff like that. Obviously, some stuff are, like, out of pocket, like, you shouldn't be hanging out with your exes or anything like that. But if he gets mad at you for stuff that he already does, 
Girl, you gotta leave him. He's being manipulative and hella controlling. Oh, hell no, I've dealt with people like that. My ex was low-key like that. But honestly, a lot of guys are. It's something It's more common than it should be. So here's the last red flag. If he takes hours to reply to you, that's already a given that you are not on his priority list. Probably like, I said before, you're probably like number 47 on his fucking whole list. So just take it what it is and don't reply to him too. Like make him wait hours, days even to reply. If he's gonna treat you like an option, girl, you better treat him like his last option. <laughs> I definitely know a dude that gets really butthurt when I don't give him attention when he does reply and it gets annoying because he thinks he has hella fans, hella girls just take chasing him and that's like an ego stroke they get and if they don't get that ego stroke some guys don't know how to take it or they cry about it or they'll act different towards you or they think that you got an attitude and really you're just treating them how they treat you so once again that's very hypocritical and manipulative um but that was all of my red flags that i wanted to share with you guys if you guys want a another red flag video go ahead and like this video just so i know and i can get that up to you as soon as possible and I do need to go because it's 11 o'clock at night and I don't know how much storage I have, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.